And uh, joining us now is Dr. V.K. Paul, who's the head of pediatrics at Ames. Uh, thank you for being with us. I, I mean, it's obviously a tragedy if, uh, if a child dies of cancer. But I think what makes that tragedy even worse uh, in India is when you look at the statistics of 80 to 90 percent of children with cancer being cured internationally. There's a difference between childhood cancer and adult cancer. And adult cancer, especially after it's metastasized, is very difficult to find a cure. But 80 to 90 percent of children abroad get cured. It's only 40 percent here in India. Uh, what's the real reason for that? Well, the reason is uh, uh, it's late detection. Uh, the awareness levels are low. A vast population of us lives in the rural areas, mm -hmm. and there are challenges of accessing health care. At the same time, you can also, as we are hearing uh, repeatedly, the facilities are not at all optimum. And the expertise in terms of pediatric oncology in particular, you know, a very nice piece uh, uh, was just uh, uh, you know, presented, uh, are low. So we need to bring it all together. And, uh, and we are talking about uh, treatment, which, is, uh, uh, which should be the state-of-the-art treatment, ultimately, to achieve the survival rates uh, of 80 to 90 percent, which are aspirational but very much achievable. So we need to move in that direction uh, collectively as government, as society, and uh, as communities. All right, let me just also welcome Dr. Priya Ramachandran, who's a pediatric surgeon, founder of Ray of Life. And uh, Dr. Mohammad Rela is also joining us, who's a renowned uh, liver transplant surgeon. Uh, Dr. Ramachandran, you first. You actually, you were just talking about that shortage of pediatric oncologists here in India. You, one of the rare people who've come back from abroad to come back here and try and, try and do something about it. Uh, what was the reason for that? Uh, you must have been concerned about the fact that there's so few uh, experts and specialists who can treat cancer in children here in India? I was concerned more about the survival. I was concerned that the survival was a dismal 40% when I was used to seeing 90 to 95% abroad. And the reason for this, I realized, was two. One, there are no pediatric oncologists in this country, uh, at least not enough. And secondly, the cost of cancer treatment is prohibited. So, so this is why the Ray of Light Foundation was started. Okay, so two aspects. You had not enough doctors, you're saying, and secondly, the cost is so high that many people who otherwise would have been able to afford to treat, treat children in, 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 like, say, the West, they can't afford to do it out here. Those are the two big reasons you're saying. That's right. All right, Dr. Rela, the techniques and the technology uh, which is available in India, let's just set that out of the way. Now, obviously, you yourself got into the Guinness Book of World Records, I think, for uh, a liver transplant. On a, was it a five-year-old child? Five-year-old girl, I think. So the five-day-old five five day old girl. Five-day-old. Yeah, five-day-old girl. Yeah. Um, yeah, I treat um, liver cancer in children. And I think I want to come back to the same point that the cancers in children are potentially curable. We saw very good examples earlier on of uh, people coming into adulthood and leading a normal life. And we also saw not such good example of children who are really struggling with their cancer. I think the first point to make is, particularly with respect to the liver cancer, it is completely curable. And that cure is lifelong in more than 85% of the children. So that's the first point to make. The other that I want to say, say about this um, liver cancer is we, we saw a child who had to have an amputation done and we saw a, a child who had one eye removed. One of the advantages of uh, treating cancers within the abdomen is you could remove 70% of the liver, 75% of the liver. There is no external scar for them to see. We also saw that um, there was another presenter who said that these children have to live the rest of their life with the, with the consequences of their treatment of their cancer. One example was infertility. Again, and wherever there is radiotherapy, uh, you do get infertility as a complication, whereas in the liver cancer in children, they actually live and, and lead a completely normal life once they are cured of their illness, and that cure is possible in 85% of these children. Now, what about access to these children, and what about the technology for this? 
One of the things about liver cancer is it's extremely rare. If you look at the incidence of liver cancer in children, it probably is only one in a million of uh, population under 15 years of age. So right. we're talking about probably around 200 to 300 children with liver cancer each year. Were you going to say something? Interrupt. Hello. Yeah, so I was, uh, we were just taking... So note. there are only... Sorry, carry on. Finish what you were saying, please. Yeah, the, the point to make is when the incidence is low, there is a problem because not many specialists will see a large number of these children each year. So a specialist treating liver cancer or specialist treating liver diseases in children may only see two, three of them each year because it's distributed everywhere. And that's why it's important to have very specialized units with pediatric oncologists, with uh, surgeons who have right. experience in liver surgery and can also have experience in operating on children. So it needs to be focused when the incidence of an illness is very low. And, and liver cancer in children is actually a success story in cancer because internationally, if you look at the population in our country, we have a large number. What about the population in smaller countries? Each, okay. each of them would only see 10 children a year. So they all joined up together and there is a group called CIOPL group which actually devised the treatment policy for these cancer and with that, now we can achieve cure in the majority of these children. All right, sir. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for that perspective. And, uh, you know, we certainly hope, uh, you know, uh, the, the examples that all of you are setting are great. Uh, I want to just welcome uh, Rajshri Birla now, who's the chairperson of the Aditya Birla Center for Community Initiatives and Rural Development. Uh, Ma'am, you, of course, have had a personal uh, uh, tragedy and a personal battle against... Uh, against cancer, that particular tragedy uh, changed change your life. Is, is that, uh, uh, what are the lessons that you have derived from there and what is it that you, ma'am, are now trying to do to try and, uh, try and make sure that we can win the battle against cancer? Uh, yes, I think it is possible to a great extent. Can't hear. Can't hear. Um, Billa, can yes, you... uh, this is possible to a great extent. Yeah. Carry on, ma'am. Huh? We can hear you. Uh, yes. Uh, I had a very uh, trying time when my husband got uh, prostate cancer. And I can't hear what he's saying. Uh, Sorry. Huh? Ms. Bidla, I'll tell you what, we'll just, fix, we'll just fix the audio in your ear and so, we'll come back to you uh, in a... Uh, can you hear I, me now or should we come back to you? I can please come back to me. Okay, we'll just fix the audio and we'll come back to you. In the meantime, Mr. Paul, if I can just get some thoughts from you. One of the big issues we were hearing about right now is not just the shortage of doctors that, that uh, we were hearing, but also the cost of it. And this is where, at the end of the day, if we are to treat the vast majority of people in this country who cannot afford treatment for their children, we've been hearing heartbreaking stories all through the day about little children who have not survived the fight against cancer, not because it could not have been treated, but because the parents did not have the financial ability to fund uh, that fight against cancer. This is where some of the government hospitals will probably have to step up. What is your sense of how we can tackle that part of it, the financial burden on parents? Vikram, uh, it has to be tackled at two levels. One, as you correctly said, that we need to augment our facilities in the public sector so that people with low resources can access it. And I do hope that as we develop uh, the National Health Assurance Mission, which the government is seized of, we will have an opportunity to enhance access to services and to create mechanisms to connect poor people to high quality services. We are looking at expansion of tertiary care system. Uh, many more aims will come up. We are proud of uh, public sector institutions such, such as Bellore, uh, in the in the NGO sector, Tata Cancer, and so on. We need many more of that. So that's one part. But in the meanwhile, and even when we have these great facilities in the public sector accessible to the poor, we need to connect these families and to connect the system to the society. There will always be need 
for the non-government organizations, philanthropy to play a role and the corporate social responsibility framework of the country provides such opportunity. I think mere augmentation is one part of the story. But at the same time, even, even in the interim, but even later on, we would require uh, NGOs, we will now require the initiatives, the kind of initiative that you are running, to be able to help the families to meet the stress and the burden and the financial catastrophe which, uh, which looms large. Just want to also add that even in the current system, there are uh, mechanisms, there is a uh, Nidhi uh, 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 available from the central government, there's a prime minister's fund available, and there are other resources of the state government that are accessible uh, to the poor. We need to connect families to these resources that are accessible. Uh, and our, right. our, will make the treatment of cancer in poor families possible. All right, sir. Well, uh, Mr. Rachi Billa, let me try and come back to you. You were telling us about uh, about the, the battle against cancer as you see it. Uh, yes, uh, I think our country can do a lot if it's done in a concerted way. Uh, recently, our country managed to eradicate polio, which was uh, uh, looked into since last 20 years. People were working on it. And uh, it, there has to be a concerted effort, like the government, uh, the private uh, hospitals, and uh, NGO, a big NGO like Rotary Club. It was uh, very nicely planned, and, uh, and here we see the results. So we can do a lot in our country. Just wanted to get your sense, ma'am, of how to tackle this particular issue of a lot. So many people simply cannot afford cancer treatment. So what is your thoughts of how not just the government, but also the private sector and foundations can come and try and, try and help people in being able to pay for treatment? Uh, yes. Uh, I think I'll give uh, an example of what we are doing. Like, uh, we built a cancer wing in a hospital in Pune, and we are going to uh, prepare some mobile vans, uh, which would be fully equipped with uh, scans and uh, uh, cans and equipments like that, and those will go into the villages and uh, spread awareness and do uh, instant checkups, and whoever needs any uh, operation or something, they'll be brought to the hospital. So this will be our, uh, our pilot project, and once it's been established, then we can, uh, we can do more. All right, ma'am. Uh, all the best with those efforts. Uh, Dr. Damchandran, one final, perhaps, quick word from you. Your assessment of how long yes. it will take in India before survival rates for cancer with children will go from 40% to the 80-90% that we see in the West? Not long at all. In my small group of 80 children, our foundation has been working for the last 12 years and we have only 80 children because of fund constraints. These 80 children, 80% 80 of them are alive and well. Okay. The oldest child, he's uh, 22 years old now, he's holding down a job. And, and the young girl whom we treated first, she was 16 when she had leukemia. She's now married and she's going to become a mother. So what, what people need to understand that this is not a lost cause. Cancer is not a lost cause. And with funds and the right kind of people treating, survival can go up to 80% in no time. It's, it's really a question of people coming together. With our foundation, we provide the money for drugs and consumables, but we also very closely supervise the treatment of these children. And it's our panel of pediatric oncologists who do it. We have a big advantage because we have a partner in this. It's a Child's Trust Hospital. They are a super specialty hospital who wave off the bed and lab charges for our cancer children. So right. we can get a child treated for over three years with just five lakhs, which is why we have been able to do 80 children. So or, if people come together like this, the survival can in no time become 80 to 90 percent. All right, Dr. Ramachandran, that's, uh, that, that, that's good to know. But of course, uh, the overall question of people being able to afford it is, is I guess, still there. 
Thank you all so much for joining us, for shedding some, some light on that. And we, we certainly hope that that be overall concern that we've also been having about only having 50 pediatric oncologists that will get sorted out. Thank you all so much for having joined us with that perspective.